Hello there, I'm Josh Wachua and welcome to Jerry Productions. Today we're looking at my favorite blockbusters of 2013. So let's get into it. Let's get to it. So what a blockbuster is, is they're the big movies of the year, the big action-packed entertainment films that we always get, that studios puts hundreds of millions of dollars into. Now these films are the big money makers and they're the ones that studios always look to to make money for them. So. Because of that, little films like The World's End, which I really enjoyed, were action-packed and entertaining as heck. I can't include them because that's a small studio film. And movies like Monster University, though they made the big dollars just like those big movies, it's an animated kids film and it isn't really considered a blockbuster. So those are two movies that I wanted to put in here, but I kind of couldn't based on the definition of a blockbuster. So yeah, so now we're going to start with my number 5, which is World War Z. World War Z is a zombie movie based on the novel, though entirely different to the source material. And it's directed by Mark Foster, and it stars Brad Pitt. The other actors you may know from several things, but... You won't really know them if I say them by name. This movie beat out The Hobbit and some other big films like Iron Man 3 and Thor The Dark World. And to me mainly it's because that even though some of its CG is iffy and some of the action set pieces are overdone and, and aren't always great, the main reason I like this film is that in the end it still is very thoughtful. And we talk about that's something I really liked more. about it and some of its sequences especially the claustrophobic ones really really do work especially because it is a zombie film so you need those claustrophobic moments and most of the time there is a sense of danger though a lot of the time you are wondering how the heck Rap is still alive but in the end I thought it was mostly well done though there's lots of stuff that I don't like about it the last third was really well done and they it was actually fully re-shot and rewritten by Damon Lindelof and Drew Goddard and so my course had to go reshoot the whole thing. But in the end it ended up working better. That's probably one of the best parts of the movie because it is more zombie movie-ish and so I really enjoyed that part of it. Yeah, I give it three and a half stars. My number four favorite blockbuster of 2013 is Man of Steel. Goodbye, my son. Our hopes and dreams travel with you. You'll be an outcast. I'll kill him. How? He'll be a god to them. Now, yes, I do have lots and lots of problems with the Man of Steel, but for the first two thirds of it are really fantastic, really well done character pieces. It's really well done on a technical level, good CG, it's great action sequences. But yeah, it really was the last third of this movie that really brought it down for me. Like, the trailer had me fully keen for this movie, but the last third really took it down quite a few notches. It was because there it dropped character completely and just went full blown spectacle and did not care about human lives. I mean, they killed millions of people. I mean, at least hundreds of thousands of people. And yeah, that part really annoyed me because the rest of the movie was so well done and I was really loving it and that just had to go ruin it. Like, I don't even care that Superman kills Zod. That seems like a very logical decision. And so I'm fine with that, but the fact that they destroyed half of Metropolis for no reason when they could have just fought in the desert or fought in space, that frustrated me. But in the end, it was really well done. Great action sequences, especially with the female Kryptonian. That character was BAMF, and I, I loved that character. It was pretty awesome. But yeah, even though I really liked it, I just still had problems with it. Man of Steel, I gave. Four stars, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with that. The reason why I didn't reach five was because of the last third, which really brought it down, which was very unfortunate. But yeah, that's that's my thoughts on the film. What's the S stand for? It's not an S. On my world, it means hope. Well, here it's an S. How about super? Excuse me.
My number three favorite blockbuster is Pacific Rim. Gypsy Danger, report to Bay 08. Kaiju, category three. Pilot to pilot connection, engaged. Gentlemen, your orders are to protect the city of two million people. Then let's go fishing. Now, you're probably going on, but you just accuse Man of Steel of destroying cities and Pacific Rim, they destroy cities. But that's because Pacific Rim is not about Superman who can think for himself and is just one tiny dude. It's about giant freaking robots fighting giant freaking monsters. And yeah, for me, this is was pure entertainment while Man of Steel was taken too seriously. Well, Pacific Rim has fun with it. And yes, the script isn't exactly great, the dialogue isn't exactly great. The characters are all anime caricatures. And yes, that yeah, takes a bit away from it, born. but heck, it's one of the best to damn live-action anime movies we've ever gotten, and the fact that it's an original movie too, even shoes. though of course it's influenced by several things. But yeah, this is an entertaining spectacle at its best, and it, man, does it just fill you up with adrenaline, and it makes you feel like an eight-year-old kid again. And it just reminds me of the types of anime I used to watch as a kid, and I still do, and I had a lot of fun with that. Beautifully crafted on a visual side, it is fantastic. The cinematography, the CG, the it, on the it is fantastic. Died. It's exhilarating, and I just had a whole lot of fun. Never and that's the main reason why blockbusters are made so that we can have fun with them. And that's what Pacific Room was. It was entertaining. It was incredibly fun, and it was enjoyable. And sure, the script has lots of problems and isn't exactly well written, but I had a lot of fun, and that's the main point of a blockbuster. So yeah, Pacific Room was. Awesome. Pacific Rim I'm giving 4 stars, the reason why it doesn't get any high is because it really doesn't have anything substantial to it, but the reason why it's not any lower is because it's entertaining as hell. Pacific Rim Now my number two, which is actually a bit controversial in the geek sphere, but yeah, I'm gonna go with Star Trek Into Darkness. You think you can't make mistakes? But the choices you make could get yourself and everyone under your command killed. But I believe in you, Jim. I really enjoyed the first Star Trek, and I really enjoyed the second Star Trek. I gave them both the same score, though I do like the first one more. But yeah, in the nerd sphere, because it basically is a rehash of Wrath of Khan, they have been really harsh to it, and they've been cranky, and yeah, I can understand that. They didn't need it to be Khan, and if you haven't seen the movie, it doesn't really matter. Benedict Cumberbatch is Khan, so get over it. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. I enjoyed it. I love the characters and the world and JJ Abrams is a fantastic director Unfortunately, the script is where the problems are. But yeah in the end I had a good time and though lots of nerds are full-on crying like girls about it I enjoyed it. Of course Wrath of Khan is a better movie But this is an entertainment blockbuster not a still for sci-fi film and I had a lot of fun with it The characters are great and yeah, I just really enjoyed it and I think it's a really fun movie. Star Trek Into Darkness, I gave four and a half stars when I first reviewed it, and I'm gonna stick with that. I really do enjoy the movie, even though it does have lots of problems. No ship should go down without her, Captain. I believe in you, Jim. Now, for my number one favorite blockbuster of 2013, it's the obvious choice, Gravity. Explore's been hit! Explore, do you read? Explore, over, explore! Astronaut is off structure, Dr. Stone is off structure. Dr. Stone's attacked. Must be attacked. Stone's attacked. 
that arm's gonna carry you too far. Listen to my voice. You need to focus. I'm losing visual of you. In a few seconds, I won't be able to track you. You need to detach. I can't see you anymore. Do it now. It is a movie that you had to see on the big screen. You had to see it in IMAX or whatever the biggest screen you could see it in. And in 3D. The 3D was fantastic. On a technical level, it is a flawless film. It is fantastically done. There's lots of character, lots of heart in this film. And it was just exhilarating from beginning to end. It is one and a half hours of pure adrenaline pumping terror. And you're on the edge of your seat the entire time. Sandra Bullock does a really good job. I enjoy George Clooney playing George Clooney. And it's just a whole lot of fun, even though you're totally, completely stressed out the whole time. But you're enjoying the stress because it's just fantastic filmmaking. It really draws you in and puts you inside this situation. And you feel what the character is feeling, especially the POV shots. I love the POV shots. Alfonso Cuaron is a fantastic director. And just what he was able to do visually and the way he was able to set the tone, create the suspense and the tension. It's just fantastically directed. Fantastically done, written by him and his son, Jonas Cuaron. It was actually his son's idea, and his son wanted to make it one day, but then Daddy was like, no, nope, I'm making this, because I want to make it. And so, yeah, fantastically done, fantastically made. It was just a fantastic piece of entertainment that got people's butts off the couches and into the cinemas, and that's what a blockbuster should do. And I'm glad that it's getting lots of positive praise and getting lots of awards bars. And also the fact that it made a buttload of money because that means Hollywood will stop being all pretty and not giving money to projects like this. This means that they're going to be bold and they're going to give money to projects like this so that we can get more movies like this because there is a market there. And I'm glad that people went out and saw it and paid money and that the movie did make money. That means Alfonso Cuaron will get more projects. That means more thoughtful entertainment pieces will be made and that is something I'm excited about but with movies like Gravity if they keep making films like that and if they keep taking risks like that I think blockbusters will still be made and that they'll be made even better than before and that they'll be more than just pieces of entertainment but also pieces of cinema. Gravity of course I give it five stars that's what I gave it when I saw it and it's just a fantastic film and a fantastic piece of filmmaking. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on my favorite blockbusters from 2013. If you have a list of blockbusters that is completely different than mine, comment below. Go to my Facebook page like that. Comment there. We can talk about it. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and subscribe. Anyway, I'm Joshua Chow. This is Jared Productions. Just get out there and watch good movies.